What? Okay, call the, call the room. Let's go. Madam Clerk, Mr. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Here. Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Polensic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. You have a chair. You, you have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, first of all, will everyone please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll make the following statement. This meeting of Cleveland City Council is a lawful meeting. Under section 605.04 of the codified ordinances, no person with purpose or to prevent or disrupt a lawful meeting shall do any act which obstructs or interferes with the due conduct of such meeting. Members of the public are invited to speak only under the rules set by this council. Disruptions including but not limited to Speaking out of turn, making loud noises and loud utterances are in violation of the rules and interfere with the due conduct of this lawful meeting. Such disruptions may constitute a misdemeanor and a violation of section 605.04. Anyone who disrupts this lawful meeting in violation of the codified ordinances commits misdemeanors and is subject to prosecution. The following is the first and only warning. It is, if this meeting is disrupted, I will gavel the halt to the proceedings and direct the assembled officers to escort any person participating in the disruption out of the chambers. Once 
persons participating in the disruptions are outside of the chambers, the officers will close the doors. The dis and the disruptors will be handled as directed by the Director of Public Safety. The council proceedings will not begin again until those that participated in the disruption have left the chamber and the chamber doors are closed. Disruptors will not be allowed back in the chambers after the meeting resumes. Again, this is the first and only warning. All right, Madam Clerk, please, Mr. Clerk, please dispense with the journal. <clears throat> A motion by Councilwoman Gray that the reading of the minutes of the last meeting be dispensed with and the journal approved. Seconded by Councilmember Bishop. Thank you. We'll now move to public comment. Uh, first, we have Reverend Pamela Pinckney Butts, and uh, she's from Cleveland. She's here to talk about the topic of bridging gaps, and she's representing No Fear But God, Fellowship Church, the People's Party, and being paid by, uh, and she is being paid by someone. Reverend Pinckney. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I'm a preacher. I like response, please. Good evening. That means we everybody going to get along up in this room tonight, right? All right. Um, just briefly, I just wanted to say that a wise woman builds her house and a foolish one tears it down plucks it down with our own hands, and we women are not going to be tearing down our homes by any means or measure or allow anyone else to do so. Yes, we are concerned about Africa, Afghanistan, Palestine, Israel. We're, we're concerned about Ukraine. We're concerned about all national issues and catastrophes and violence and, and murder. But the answer is not violence on top of violence. So let's bridge the gaps between us, everybody. Let's bridge these gaps, these racial barriers, these gender barriers, these murder-mindedness. Let's bridge the gaps. The one thing that we must do is focus on what we have in common, not where we differ. The one thing we must do is focus on the fact that each of us has a desire and a need for food, shelter, clothing, health care, and education. The another thing that we have in common is that we all want to have a safe community to live in. So let's bridge the gaps, everybody. Let's not come down here, anybody, I don't care who it is, whether it's on that side of the bench or this one, and tear up anything else or allow it to be torn up in the city of Cleveland. Let's bridge the gaps. Let's bridge the gaps and have some, some main conversation at the table to see what we have in common. Let's bridge the gaps, everybody. It's time to move forward. Yes, we are concerned. Yes, we do care. We have the same issues in America that are in Palestine and Israel and Africa and Afghanistan and around the world. But let's not bring that mindset here to Cleveland, Ohio, and the United States of America. Let's bridge those gaps, everybody. Thank you. Next, we have Muna Azraf from Fairview Park here to talk about Gaza and uh, representing no, nobody and not being, and being paid by someone. I would like to say shame on you all for staying with Israel and continuing to ethnically cleanse my people for over 75 years. As someone from Yaffa, Palestine, or currently known as Yafo, Tel Aviv, occupied Palestine, I know the atrocities my grandparents have gone through I know how they survived the 1948 Nakba. As a Palestinian American citizen, I have the privilege to visit Palestine whenever I want. While my relatives in the West Bank and all Palestinians in the whole world don't have that privilege. That sounds like apartheid to me. I have the privilege to feel safe at night and sleep without being afraid to get bombed, sniped, or my town raided. To justify all these atrocities going on in Gaza, the genocide that Israel is doing in Gaza, they used a false claim that has not been proven about rapes in October 7 to get the immediate support from the world without any evidence. 
Israeli occupation forces have recently raped pregnant women in Gaza in front of her husband, children, and relatives in Al Shifa Hospital. They shot and killed any one of her family members that tried to close their eyes so they don't have to witness that atrocity. They killed the woman and her unborn child. Imagine being that husband, being that child, being that family member of that woman. So what have our city done to prevent all these atrocities that Israel is committing and our country is supporting? They have chose to not pass a ceasefire resolution. Instead, they chose to waste over 44 thousand three hundred and seventy one plus dollars of our taxpayer money to kill Israel Palestinians shame I would like to remind you all that you are messing up with the wrong people our fight has been going on for over 75 years and still to this day we are resisting the, resisting the Zionist occupation as we will continue for in the future for for the remainder of our lives and I would like to say that we will be teaching the upcoming generation about what happened to our grandparents, to our parents, to us, and how we resisted this Zionist occupation. They said the old will die and the young will forget. I would like you all to take a look at these chambers. Do we look like we forgot? No one can defeat these people that believe that death is not the end. Free Palestine. Next we have Adam Bresnahan. Adam is from Ward 11. He's here to talk about pedestrian safety. He's representing no one and not being paid by anyone. Is Adam around? Adam? Hi, how you doing? My name's Adam Bresnahan, I live in Ward 11. Uh, I just wanna talk about uh, pedestrian safety. Uh, in Cleveland, it's really a problem, and I think that the city government needs to address it. Uh, when I'm walking in crosswalks with a green light, motorists regularly violate my right of way. Right-turning motorists often fail to stop at the red light and either continue driving or park on top of the crosswalk. Left-turning motorists often only pay attention to oncoming traffic and speed into the crosswalk when I and other pedestrians are walking in it. This law-breaking activity is facilitated by bad traffic engineering and infrastructure. Here are just a few of the problem crosswalk intersections in the city. And again, I wanna emphasize, I'm talking about when the pedestrian has the green light, is in the crosswalk and has the right of way. Ward three, East Ninth at St. Clair and at Superior. Just between the time when I registered for this public comment and today, I was almost hit by a car at East Knight and St. Clair because they ran through the red light while making a right turn. Ward 6, Buckeye and East 116th. Ward 8, Waterloo and East 156th. I almost got run over by a speeding left turning car here. Ward 12, Broadway and Etna. Ward 14, Denison and Ridge. Denison and Ridge might be the most dangerous intersection on the entire west side. And thinking about the fact that children have to cross Ridge here on Denison makes me want to cry because it's so dangerous. Um, Ward 15, uh, the Lake Shoreway West intersection, which uh, is like insane. It has so many problems uh, that there's no way we could talk about them here today. Uh, but the uh, council member from that ward that I don't live in at least, uh, you know, respond to my message about it. Uh, finally, my home ward, Ward 11. Both segments of the West Detroit intersection, in particular southbound cars turning right on Detroit, regularly ignore the red light and thus the crosswalk across West. Moreover, West Boulevard is effectively a highway off-ramp on-ramp during the rush hour, making crossing at a Clifton incredibly dangerous because right turners in the morning ignore the red light uh, and drive over the crosswalk while left turners in the evening ignore pedestrians. I have written my council member detailed descriptions of these problems in our ward and have suggested some uh, low-cost so potential solutions, including shorter crosswalk wait times, no extended crosswalk wait times at rush hour, uh, more no right turn on red signs, reduced speed limits, and dedicated pedestrian green lights while all traffic lights are red. Uh, but did I get a response? No. Uh, but during the election last November, I did get a lot of campaign literature from the councilman proclaiming that public safety is his top concern. Uh, does public safety include pedestrian safety? Uh, pedestrians are members of the public, and well, safety is safety, uh, but maybe words, in, uh, words have different meanings in Cleveland Ward 11. 
So uh, I just want to emphasize, please, I know you know that this is a problem. I know that you inherited a city with terrible uh, car-centric infrastructure, but please start taking some action to improve the experience of pedestrians because the crosswalks are very dangerous here. Thanks. Next, we have Chance Zarub. Chance is from Cleveland Heights. He's here to talk about public official accountability. He represents the Palestinian youth movement, and he's not being paid by anyone. My name is Chance, and I'm a member of the Palestinian youth movement. For the past 17 weeks, we have attended Cleveland City Council, creating the longest sustained movement in Cleveland history and the longest push for a ceasefire resolution across the country. We've had private meetings with you all, had over 2,000 Clevelanders sign our petition calling on City Council to pass a resolution, and mobilized over 100 people to speak at public comment. Since October 16th, we have continued to pack City Hall because we understand the importance from Cleveland to Palestine. A resolution from Cleveland is, a, is powerful in itself and a mere fraction of what we could do for the people of Gaza. However, Council, and specifically Blaine Griffin, have pretended to be ignorant on the issue and call this an ancient conflict. This comes despite the fact that members of this council, such as Griffin, have taken multiple trips to Israel, such as in 2017 and 2019, or that Blaine Griffin has taken pictures with known anti-Palestinian agitator Alec Popovicker, a man that has ran over business owners in his own ward. However, despite the feigned ignorance, today offers an opportunity. With the United Nations Security Council passing a ceasefire resolution, this council has the opportunity to do the same. For the P Palestinians of Gaza and for the Palestinian and Arab community of Cleveland that has been suffering for the past six months while our families, friends, and loved ones undergo a genocide. So for the past 17 weeks, we have called, but city council is not the only one that hasn't answered. We have called on all of our elected officials to echo the call for a ceasefire. And while that includes council, that also includes our congresspeople. It includes our senators. And lastly, it includes the city of Cleveland's mayor, Justin Bibb, a man that issued his own support of genocide. Justin Bibb, who was flown on a free trip to Israel prior to his mayoral race, which was accompanied with briefcases of money, according to someone on his campaign team. Justin Bibb, who at any point during this past 17 weeks could have introduced a resolution himself, standing with the will of his constituents of Cleveland. And lastly, the Justin Bibb, who during his time at Key Bank secured an investment of $9 million in Israeli bonds. So while we pursue divestment from Israeli bonds and occupation, let this be your heads up. We are coming for you, Justin. With that, we'll see you next week. Next, we have Malik. Rashid, Rashid, Malik Rashid is from Bay Village. Malak, Malak is here to talk about divestment and international newcomer concerns, and uh, she's not representing anyone, not being paid by anyone. Malak. Good evening, Council President Griffin, City Council members, Mayor Bibb, directors, and all. I am here today with the privilege of speaking on behalf of a segment of the Cleveland community that I believe is one of, among one of the most beautiful parts of the city, the newcomer immigrant and refugee community who for tonight, one refugee family has asked me to share their story with you all. Over many years, I have been a part of hundreds of newcomers' journey in finding their footing and grow roots and a sense of community in Cleveland, often, often needing help with things that those of us who have lived in Cleveland for most of our life, for all of our, all of our life, don't even think twice about. Rarely do we ever have the fear of the possibility of war in this country, having our homes raided by hev heavily armed soldiers, bombings, or white phosphorus being released onto places of worship or schools. Children, women, and men in Palestine, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Yemen, Syria, Sudan, and others live this fear daily, and for many, it's all that they have ever known their whole life. Many refugees to Cleveland have had their whole life shaped 
and changed at the hands of others, specifically other nations, mainly the United States, directly or indirectly, changing the course of their entire lives. For some new Clevelanders, they have been displaced two to three times, never being able to have a place to call long, home long enough other than to remember its darkness. Khaled, who came as a refugee in 2020, 2021 from Syria, is originally from Palestine. In 1948, Khaled's parents, along with he and his siblings, left their fourth generation home in Salfa, which is a village near Jerusalem during the 1948 Nefka and went to Lebanon. Before he knew it, his family moved once again to Syria in 1967 because of the Six-Day War. Finding his wife later in life, starting his family and having children in what was his home of Syria started to feel too surreal to him, only to be then displaced once again because of the Syrian War. Khaled still has family in Gaza and hasn't heard from them in four months. Last he was told, he has lost 35 members to date in his family. Khaled vividly, vividly remembers seeing what country's names were on the bombs dropped when he was in Syria and seeing the United States as one of them was one of, that he will never forget. And talking about how he feels about living in Cleveland, he said, living in a city, county, and country that every level of government one way or another supports the very people who are killing my family makes me feel really, really sad. I share Khaled's story because this story is shared by many like Khaled from across the world who have faced war. I share this because like Khaled, who feels that even in their own new communities, there is once again no sense of solidarity, support, or feeling of feeling completely safe. The interconnectedness of violence globally is closer than we are willing to realize, and it is how and why that as long as the First Amendment stands, it is our civic duty to give a voice to those who face oppression and to act against any power, influence, individual, or corporation that contributes to these systems because global issues are our issues. A call for a ceasefire is one step in the right direction in standing for true justice and standing against oppression. But the real impact is what comes next, divestments. This is why I implore the City of Cleveland, Cleveland City Council, and the Mayor's Office to investigate and divest from any and all financial assets that are in support of the State of Israel and that are connected to supporting the violence against Palestinians to divest from them that are, they are operating on stolen Palestinian land, its colonial settlements, and the systems that contribute to the oppressions of the Palestinians, and to continue to divest until the apartheid system is dismantled. Whether it's divesting from contracts that allow purchasing of LED lights from Time. Israeli owned companies, we need to divest from anything that contributes to world oppression. Thank you. Next, we have Ruby Darwish. Ruby Darwish is from Westlake, and Ruby Darwish is here to talk about the ceasefire resolution. Ruby is not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Good evening, Council. My name is Ruby Darwish. Um, so on October 16, 2023, we came to you in condemnation of your words supporting Israel. 23 weeks ago today, we came to you pleading for a ceasefire resolution, and look where we are now. For five months, we've been showing up to city council meetings to show that while you may not, the people of Cleveland are against genocide. And your lack of understanding, your ignorance, carelessness, and blatant disregard of Palestinians and its martyrs has not discouraged us, yet pushed us even further. On Monday, March 4th, we had gathered on, our, on your very own steps to pass the People's Resolution. Week after week, our First Amendment rights have been restricted in your attempt to silence us, yet here we are louder than ever. While you, may, while you may be able to tune out our ceasefire calls, something I can't tune out is the screams of men, women, and children being brutally murdered and tortured, but that's just me. The cries of 40,000 Gazans, including 14,000 children murdered and nearly 80,000 injured is something that haunts me every single day, and you should be disturbed as well. Council members, I am here to question your humanity and will continue to do so along with the people in this room with me tonight. I question whether a call for a ceasefire is even enough to make, for, make up for weeks of negligence. Mayor Bibb, you claim to hold the people of Cleveland first and to lead bold change, but so far we've seen consistent behavior and a lack of effort to make any sort of change. So lastly, I ask all of you in this room tonight, do you really stand with the people of Cleveland? Thank you. Next, we have Jenny Muhadeen. Jenny Muhadeen is from Lakewood. She's here to talk about child care. She's not representing anyone, and she is not being paid by anyone. Jenny, you have the floor. Ramadan Kareem. I want to start by reading some messages that I received from Alec Popikover, who President Blaine Griffin took a photo with and has spoken multiple times at public comment. You are like the black Nazis who claim to be real Jews, same trash in a different shade. Your nationality is limited to being an anti-Semite, anti-Semite, terrorist, heathen, death cult. 
He said he's never seen Palestine mentioned in the Quran. Is it next to Wakanda? Are real Jews black? Yes, these are messages he sent me, and yes, I do have the receipts. All we've been asking for is recognition, and I'm glad we're turning a new leaf. That being said, it doesn't undo the trauma and grief this room has seen. We've seen kids with their faces burnt beyond recognition. <laughs> we've seen our kids cleaning up their guts and blood of their family members. And this new leaf doesn't undo the damage in Gaza. <laughs> We now vow to work to rebuild and prevent any future violence week after week. And we have continued the push for a ceasefire resolution. This is the easiest, least controversial thing to request, especially considering that now the U.S. abstained from voting and the United Nations Security Council also demands immediate ceasefire in Gaza. And even though we know that a ceasefire resolution will benefit our people locally and internationally, you continue to say it wasn't a local issue. And if it wasn't, it most definitely is a local issue now. The Islamic Islamophobic and racist remarks that we've heard in the past few weeks should not be considered free speech, but rather hate speech. Council Member Kelly, your son is a Muslim, and you have fellow Muslims, fellow members on council inviting people to say, Allah is not our God, calling our people and gatherings terrorism while we speak in a foreign language, and that your lives are at stake. Thank you, Councilwoman House Jones, for seeing through that bull. If us sharing a meal to break our fast with all types of people, including police and staff, and putting our foreheads on the ground with our backs turned and praying for peace is intimidating, then you are the most cowardly, incapable council and must be held accountable. <laughs> Cleveland is no longer an inclusive, welcoming city, and it has been your job to fix this injustice. And once we have submitted public record requests, including text messages and emails, we will have confirmation that the city is no longer safe and makes the reform efforts that much easier. I have 40 seconds left, um, but I'm done with my speech. But I want to talk about a case that we heard outside of Al-Shifa Hospital, where a woman was raped in front of her husband, a modest covering woman, beat to death, and she was pregnant. And this is one of many, many rape cases of Israel, but they can't show you these things. And the, not only was this in front of her husband, it was in front of a m many men who watched this happen. And then they killed her. They killed her and they killed 40,000 of us. 40,000. 20,000 children. <sighs> Free Palestine. Next we have James Lamb. James Lamb. James Lamb is from Ward 3. James Lamb is here to talk about recreation. He is not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Mr. Lamb. Good evening, all. To the Honorable Mayor Justin Beard, uh, to the Honorable President, President of the Council, and the, and the body of council. I come to you all this evening on the matter of this. I lived in Cleveland now 54 years. I come from Pennsylvania. I get here and I was told I couldn't work. A ticket to work comes out, and I can work it. So now I'm a tax credit. Mayor, Mayor Jackson puts me to work, and I go to work for six years, doing the most honorable job Cleveland can find. Okay? Someone did not holler. Someone is just trying to make a city grow. And believe me, pe people, we all understand your pain. We all have families. So when it comes down to that, I was born with a disability. So, hey, life is life and God gonna handle it. But when it comes down to it all, I go to work for six years. I do a job that's talked about every day. Turn out work that no one else can turn out. Work during COVID, okay? My councilman running around, he loves me to death. He calls me the mayor three months. But all of a sudden, I get terminated from a job because of the fact that I asked 
to meet with Mayor Beard, and he told me, arrange the meeting and we can talk. I called the office twice after not getting an answer, but the phone picked up. On the 19th of December, I'm in City Hall. So I decide, well, I know it's calendar busy, but I'll go and find out what they can do about putting me on the calendar for the first quarter of the year. I get up in the office, I get told, you're not going to see the mayor. You're not going to see the mayor. I say, well, we all got bosses, and everybody down here that know me know one thing. I don't mind going over nobody's head, because we all do have bosses. And at the end of the day, the taxpayer run this city. The taxpayers. So I get, the, I, I leave here, go to work. Time, finish up, Mr. Lamb. One second, please. Just, please finish please, up. Please, please, I just need, I got the, I go to work the next day to find out that I got fired over the telephone. Got fired without no written notice. Mr. Lamb, your time is up. No verbal, no your suspension. Somebody, the, the ADA can't help me because they work for Mayor B if they say it. So somebody got to do Mr. Lamb, something. your time is up, sir. Okay. And we or we'll I'll follow end up, up in Washington. We'll follow up. Work. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Atef Zaroub, and Atef Zaroub is from Cleveland Heights here to talk about Palestine, representing no one and not being paid by anyone. How you doing, guys? This is for uh, the mayor, Justin Pipps. I've been living over here for 42 years in Cleveland. When Michael White was a mayor, after that, Jane Campbell, uh, Frank Jackson, and now it's your turn, you know? He never did nothing for Cleveland so far, you know? 2025 is coming soon for you. It's gonna be out of the door, you know? I'm a member from the union, 310. We are powerful in Cleveland, okay? And each time when anyone from you guys want to be election, he come to our union to be, to be supported. You know, we been supported you guys for all those years, we, when we ask us about a small thing for the ceasefire, no, you kick us out right away. You sitting over here, guys, they're not doing nothing. Each one of you looking at his phone or talking to his partner, you just ignore it, you know? The only thing, you never put it, to asking each other to go and vote for it. Just ignore it, you guys. What we need you guys for over here to represent Cleveland that for? If you're not gonna listen to the people and see by your eyes what we're doing, we lost a lot of members in our family. That's the only thing we're asking you to do for our city over here. And what you guys do? Nothing, you know? Absolutely nothing, you know? You guys sitting in your chairs, you know, over here, you're enjoying yourself, but next year, watch what, what, what you guys are gonna end up over there, you know? You, you need a lot of support of us, you know? If you not sub get our support, you're not gonna have this year, you know? We just ask you for one thing, you know, all our, those guys, they've been coming for 17 weeks now. They coming over here, what you guys do? Nothing. Sitting to each other, you know, talking to each other, each one of them, you, and his phone, and talking, and, uh, you know, and stuff to his partner, nothing. He's just the first one time, Justin Pips, he show up, you know, in our meeting over here. We've been coming for 17 weeks, we never seen him. What, what, what we need a mayor for then, you know? If you not uh, listen to the people, whatever they need, what do you need you for, guys? Sorry, guys, you know, two, 2025 is coming, 
you gotta hold your seat real good because you know, you, you're gonna miss it after that. Thank you guys. Last we have Chairman Fahim. Chairman Fahim Antoine Tobert from Buckeye Ward 6, the state of our youth. He's from New Era, Cleveland. He's not being paid by anyone. Is, uh, is he here? Peace and love, everybody. How y'all doing today? Good. Time is starting out, all right. Um, first, it's obvious by my hoodie where I stand. I stand with the people of Gaza, free Palestine. So absolutely. And I also want to be very specific about the demographic of people that I represent, the southeast side of Cleveland. We stand with the people of Gaza as well. And so with that, yeah, thank you. And so with that, we are demanding a ceasefire right here in the city of Cleveland. As our children are being slaughtered in the streets, I believe it was 150 murders, over 150 homicides last year in the city of Cleveland. 70 of those homicides were ages, were young men and women between the ages of 18 and 33. 22 children were murdered last year in the city of Cleveland. Right, we're not even including the population of juveniles that we got incarcerated in the eight to nine prison-based facilities that we have in the city. So we have a huge problem here, right? And so I got a few points that I really want to touch on because to me, context matters. Uh, some of y'all know who I am in this room. I've had multiple council members sitting at these tables reach out to me personally to address issues going on, going on in their neighborhoods, to assist families, juveniles in particular, in their neighborhoods. And we've had some barriers put in place, right? My organization has been labeled a criminal organization. I had a meeting a few months ago with the former 4th District Commander, Mo Brown. And he told us that Councilwoman Deborah Gray came to him and labeled New Era Cleveland as a criminal organization. Let me tell you about my organization. We fed over 200,000 families in Northeast Ohio. Is that correct, Mr. Starr? That is correct. You were with us. We've helped search and rescue five missing children that were being human sex trafficked in the city of Cleveland. Isn't that correct, Mr. Jones? That is correct. Right, so why are these bears being put in place and why put my people in harm's way by labeling my organization a criminal organization? We have a community center right in your ward, Councilman Blaine Griffin. We couldn't even get a meeting with you because of the issues with Councilwoman Gray. I have a problem with that. My young men that, that I brought with me today in the back room, the Cave of Adelum Academy. We have a youth academy at Cowhoggy Hills Juvenile State Prison. We have a juvenile, we have a Cave of Adelum Academy at the county jail right here in Cleveland, and we have two locations out in the community. And we have all of these barriers being put in place. So when we talk about the state of the youth, as uh, Elder Paul Hill said, if you want to know how society is doing, ask this one simple question. How are the children? Look at our kids. So Councilwoman Gray, when you put these barriers in place, ma'am, you're putting these barriers in place for these young men, not me, for whatever issue you may have. And I want to be clear about that. I, I kept my head down the last year, and I tried to do the work and not get wrapped up in the politics, but this year I want to smoke. Uh, Mayor Justin Bibb, I'm going to wrap this up. Mayor Justin Bibb, you've been ducking me for a long time. And I want to let you know that the city of Cleveland has got its uh, return on investment. That settlement, that 55000 we built a youth academy. Time. We fed over 25,000 families, and we busted up all of our work in the city of Cleveland. So thank you. Time. Mr. Clerk, please read communications. File number 335-2024 from Dr. Gina Merritt, Principal, Northern Real Estate Urban Ventures. Notice of intent to apply to Ohio Fa Housing Finance Agency for multifamily funding programs for the development known as Emma... M uh, MLK Plaza Phase 1 at 9300 Wade Park Avenue, Ward 7. File number 348-2024 from Derek Tillman, CEO and President, Bridging the Gap, LLC. Notice of intent to apply to Ohio Housing Finance Agency for multifamily funding programs for the development known as Watterson Lake at about 1422 West 74th Street, Ward, Ward, Ward 15, Cleveland, Ohio. File number 352-2024 from Council President Blaine Griffin, designating Alan Dreyer without objection of Cleveland City Council to serve as clerk pro tem for the purposes of the March 25th, 2024, 
uh, council meeting from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, file number 326-2024. A new, a, new, a, new, a new license, application D1, Steel Low Restaurants, 55 Earview Plaza. File number 349-2024, transfer of ownership application, Buckeye Fuel, 13009 Buckeye Road. File number 350-2024, transfer of ownership application for Guru Sahib LC, 4380, 4380 State Road. File number 351-2024, stock application for Muniz, Inc., uh, 2127 Fulton Road. Are there any condolence resolutions? For Councilmember Bishop, resolution number 353-2024 for Moselle Gibson. For, for Councilmember Griffin, resolution number 354-2024 for Sandra M. Taylor. For Councilmember Griffin, resolution number 355-2024 for Wilbur Wiggins II. For, for Councilmembers Griffin and Bishop, resolution number 356-2024 for Mamie L. Mitchell. For Councilmember Starr, resolution number 357-2024 for Adriana Paulette Para. Are there any other condolences? All well, council members, please rise for a moment of silence. Mike, Mike, one. Mike Councilman Pelosi. Mr. Chairman, would the clerk please hold out a number for Michelle Wall? All well, council members, please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Are there any? Congratulatory resolutions. For Councilmember Conwell, resolution number 358-2024 for Reverend Dr. Gerald D. West Phipps. For Councilmember Griffin, resolution number 359-2024 for National United Church Ushers Association, Central Regional Ushers. For Councilmember Griffin, resolution number 360-2024 for Reverend Dan Smith. For Councilmember Polensic, resolution number 361-2024 for John Hairston. For Councilmember Starr, re re resolution number 362 that's 2024 for Reverend Maurice and First Lady Latisse Robinson. Resolutions of appreciation for Councilmember Griffin. Re re resolution number 363-2024 for Reverend Charles Payne Lucas Jr. For Councilmember Slife, resolution number 364-2024 for, for Dave Pilkey, Dogman Little Library. Resolution of welcome for Councilmembers Gr Griffin, Harrison, Casey. Re re resolution number 365-2024 for Enbridge, Inc. Inc. First reading emergency, as there are no presentations, first reading emergency ordinance is referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance number 327-2024 by Council Members McCormick and Griffin by, by departmental request. An emergency ordinance to amend section nine of ordinance number 692-2021, passed October 11th, 2021, re re relating to contracts and licenses necessary for ongoing mandatory environmental compliance for the Department of Port Control. Ordinance number 328-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into an agreement with the Neighborhood Leadership Institute to implement educational, recreational, and cultural programs in various school buildings and other facilities during evening hours, provide leadership training, and oversee the, the summer tennis program. Ordinance number 329-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Works to employ one or more professional consultants to provide security services at various indoor and outdoor recreation facilities, including but not limited to recreation centers, outdoor pools, and various surrounding play areas for a period not to exceed one year. Ordinance number 330-2024 by Council Members Kelly and by, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more requirement contracts without competitive bidding with the OPEX Corporation to provide proprietary hardware and software support and on-car maintenance for mail extractor scanners and ID assist towers for, for the Division of Fiscal Control, Department of Public Utilities for a period of two years. Ordinance number 332-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request. Emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Capital Projects on behalf of the Office of, of Sustainability to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Energy for the Energy Efficiency Conservation Block Grant Program, determining the, the method of making the public improvement of designing and constructing various types of energy efficient improvements on up to six neighborhood resource recreation centers and authorizing the director to enter into one or more contracts for, for the making of the improvement. 
Orders number 333-2024 by Council Members Conwell, Bishop and Harrison by Department of Northwest. Emergency ordinance authorizing the, the Director of Capital Projects to issue a permit to UC City Center LLC to encroach into the public right-of-way of Chester Avenue by installing, using, and maintaining a parking monument sign. Orders number 334-2024 by Council Members Harrison Griffin by Department of Northwest. Emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Community Development to terminate Housing Trust Fund Home Contract Number RH65559 with Emerald Development Economic Networking and to forgive the principal balance on the loan and to cancel the promissory note. Ordinance Number 339-2024 by Council Member House Jones. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Economic Development to enter into a grant agreement with Lutheran Metropolitan Ministry or its designee to provide economic development assistance to partially finance the purchase of equipment, the lease or acquisition of warehouse space, and the construction of pilot houses related to the development and implementation of an affordable housing program for low-income or homeless people using 3D printing technology. Ordinance number 340-2024 by Council Members Harrison Griffin by Department of Request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the, the Director of Community Development to enter into one or more agreements with, U, with United Way of Greater Cleveland as the lead partner or organization to implement a program to provide access to legal services for covered in, individuals in eviction proceedings under Section 375.12 of the Codified Ordinance of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, Legal Re Representation in Housing Court. Orders number 341-2024 by Council Members McCormack, Harrison, and Griffin by Department of Request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of City Planning to accept a grant from Project for Public Spaces for the West 29th Street Open Street Program, determining that the method of making the public improvement of installing one or more pedestrian plazas along West 29th Street, authorizing the Director of City Planning or appropriate director to enter into one or more public improvement contracts, authorizing other contracts, and applying for and accepting gifts, grants, or services from public and private entities needed to implement the grant. Ordinance number 342-2024 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by Departmental Request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Port Control to enter into one or more requirement contracts without competitive bidding with Runway Safe Inc. For, for, for proprietary services of labor, training, and materials needed to inspect, maintain, and, re and repair the engineered materials arresting systems for the Department of Port Control for a period of four years. Ordinance number 343-2024 by Council Member House Jones. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Economic Development to enter, a, to enter into a grant with United Way of Greater Cleveland or its designee to act as a city's agent to partially finance costs for the development, administration, and providing of small business and participant support associated with the development of a universal basic employment and opportunity pilot program. First reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Orders number 331-2024 by Council Member McCormack. An emergency ordinance consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the walk to end colon cancer event on August 25th, 2024, managed by Hermann's Sports of Events. Ordinance number 335-2024 by Council Members Jones, Bishop, and Gray. An emergency ordinance to amend section two of ordinance number 1281-2023, passed November 13th, 2023, relating to the agreement with, with Unimized Development Corporation for the UMDC litter campaign. Ordinance number 336-2024 by Council Member Gray. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Community Development to enter into agreement with Bell, with, with, with Burton Bell Car Development Inc. For, for the public purpose of providing the community beautification and youth job training program through the use of Ward 4 um, casino revenue funds. Ordinance number 337-2024 by Council Member Starr. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Community Development to enter into agreement with the Friendly Inn Settlement Inc. for a senior meal program through the use of Ward 5 casino revenue funds. Ordinance number 338-2024 by Council Member Griffin by Department of Request. Emergency ordinance to amend various sections in ordinance number 194-2021 passed March 29, 2021 as amended re relating to salaries for various classifications. Ord ordinance number 346-2024 by Councilmember Hairston, an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Economic Development to enter into agreement with Cavada's Garden Center for restaurant equipment project through the use of Ward 10 casino revenue funds. Read the motion to suspend the rules. Motion by Councilmember Gray that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Councilmember Bishop. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Mora, McCormack, Polancic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 16 yeas, Mr. Chairman. 
Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Murrah, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slide, Spencer Starr. 16 yeas, no nays. First reading emergency, first reading ordinances referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance number 347-2024 by Council Members Hairston Griffin by Department of Request. An ordinance to supplement the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976 by enacting new title 7A Cleveland Neighborhood Form-Based Code, which consists of chapters 3001 through 3007, and to amend section 327.01 of the codified ordinances as, a, as enacted by ordinance number 546-93, passed June 14, 90, 1993, to reference the new title 7A Cleveland Neighborhood Form-Based Code. First reading emergency resolution to be adopted. Resolution number 344-2024 by Council Member Conwell, an emergency resolution recognizing March 2024 as National Women's History Month. Read the motion to suspend the rules. It was just for introduction. It was just what? That was just for introduction. What? That was just for introduction. So where are we at second? So so this is resolutions to be adopted. First reading. First reading emergency resolution to be adopted. Resolution, resolution number 366-2024 by Council Members Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Harsh, Hairston, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Mora, McCormack, Blensick, Satana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. Emergency resolution condemning all forms of hate and discrimination in this city and around the world and supporting the United Nations Security Council resolution calling for a halt to the fighting in Gaza. Read the motion to suspend the rules. Motion by Councilmember Gray that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed in the final passage. Second by Councilmember Bishop. Call the roll. Gray, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Harrison, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormick, Polancic, Santana, Slife, Spencer. 16 yeas, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Call the roll on adoption. Gray, Blue. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Morrow, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 16 yeas, no nays. Second reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance number 38-2024 as amended by Council Members Harrison and Griffin by Departmental Request. An emergency ordinance establishing the, the shore to core to shore TIF district declaring improvements to certain parcels of real property within that district to be a public purpose and exempt from taxation, describing the public infrastructure improvements to be made to directly benefit the district, requiring the owners of the improvements on such parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, providing for the distribution of those service payments to the Cleveland Municipal School District and to one or more funds established by the city to hold those service payments, determining that satisfactory provision has been made for the public improvement needs of the district and specifying other public improvements that are in support of urban development within the city. Read the motion to suspend the rules. Ordinance number 230-2024 by Council Members Palencic and Griffin by Department of Request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to accept a grant from the United States Department of Justice COPS Office for, for the fiscal year 23 COPS hiring program for violent crime reduction. Call to roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Harrison, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Mora, McCormack, Blancic, Satana, Slife, Spencer, Starr, 16 days. Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Harrison, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Mora, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr, 16 days, no nays. Second reading, emergency resolutions to be adopted. By Council Member, uh, resolution number 322-2024 by Council Member Conwell. An emergency resolution re re recognizing that colorectal cancer is, is the second most common cause of cancer and death in the United States and encouraging people to begin colon cancer screening at age 45 as, a rec by, as recommended by the American Cancer Society. Read the motion to suspend the rules. A motion by Councilmember Gray that the rules be suspended and the legislation just be, be placed on final passage. Second by Councilmember Bishop. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Polancic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. S 16 yeas, Mr. Chairman. Call the roll on adoption. 
Griffin, Bishop, Conwell Gray, Hairston Harsh, House Jones, Joseph Jones, Casey Kelly, Maura McCormack, Blensick, Santana, Slife, Spencer Starr. 16 yeas, no nays. Are there any introductions? Seeing no introductions, are there any announcements? Seeing no announcements, is there any miscellaneous? Councilman Conwell. people real quick, Mr. President. I want to thank um, Jessica Columbia, the daughter of one of the great um, announcers for the arts. Um, Jessica gave me a phone number to uh, a mayor in this um, suburbs. And um, this guy inherited the problem. I mean, I'm not going to mention the suburb, but I talked with him on Sunday. And um, he's going to work with that. In his suburb, 94% of the people that was receiving tickets, African Americans. And that's not good. That's not good at all. And when we receive tickets, it creates barriers to employment. And that's um, black while driving through the community. And when we receive these tickets, and it creates barriers to employment. You can't get jobs. You lose your driver's license. Your insurance go up. And it hurts us in the African-American community. So Jessica reached out to me and gave me his number. And we're going to sit down and talk and to put systems in place, just like we did at University Circle, so that we could cut down on those numbers and try to change the culture of the police department. So I want to thank Jessica. And I'm thanking her publicly. That was really, really cool beans. Also, I want to thank Carrie your push for the colon cancer and the legislation you push. Although I called them, and they, I never received a return phone call, but that colon piece is very, very important to me as a colon cancer survivor myself. And then the thing is also, like, they push colon guard. You have to really go and get a colonoscopy. And the reason why you have to get that from 45 up, because colon guard does not detect the polyps. And the polyps, in the long run, can become cancerous. So you really want to get the colonoscopy. You know, you walk around thinking that you are OK because you went through colon guard, and then that polyp becomes cancerous, and then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So I want to thank you for pushing that. That's very, very important. It's the second leading cause of death to Americans is colon cancer, OK? And I want to thank God for my survival with that. Also, let me see, this one, this one. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that McKenzie, that, that um, Grant, the students, I was playing with them the other day. Remember I mentioned that at John Marshall, and you're pushing them to go to um, Washington, D.C. on July the 4th. I received a phone call this morning the McKenzie Grant is going to help to pay for that. They said, we don't need you, Councilman. So that's cool beans, man. That's good outcome measures from that grant. Parents couldn't afford to pay for it. They couldn't hardly raise any money. But now the children that you dominated to go to Washington, D.C., to represent Cleveland from John Marshall, the great ward of Brian Casey, the pride of Cleveland, John Marshall, they're going down to Washington, D.C., courtesy of the McKenzie Grant. So thank you, and thank Dr. Morgan for putting that grant back in. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you. Councilwoman Stephanie House Jones. Uh, thank you. Um Mr. President, um, so I just wanted to rise to bring note to council members of the introduction of Ordinance 343, which is a universal basic employment. I will be talking about that to you all over the next coming weeks, but it really gives Cleveland an opportunity to actually lead in a nation. Um, what we are embarking on is the opportunity to provide um, a guaranteed job with a family-sustaining wage. Um, 
this could be really, really, really important and really trying to work through some of the challenges working with small businesses as well as tax simplifications and also working with our partners at the state level and hopefully the federal level uh, once we do our project to actually show the value if when you invest in businesses that in return invest in people, how we can really tr truly, truly work um, to uh, really combat and, and reduce the generational poverty that is really combated and we have we have been confronted with here in Cleveland. I also just wanted to note that um, Mr. Devin Cotton, who is here, please stand up, Devin. He's somewhere around. Or did he leave? Oh, there he is right there. So he will be contacting you all so to be able to go in more details. I know we will have committee hearings, but it's really important uh, for people to get familiar with it. I also want to shout out uh, uh, Councilman Slife, who will be uh, being in my stead next week as I will be gone for the next two weeks. Um, but again, this is really going to be an exciting time. And then also um, for Ordinance 340, which is hopefully an, another opportunity to pilot um, Cleveland's opportunity working with Luther, Lutheran Metropolitan Ministries to actually, be, actually get the technology to hopefully be able to build 3D homes here in the city of Cleveland. Um, we are trying to change the trajectory of our city and we have to be put in a position where we actually become makers, getting back to our roots. And so this is something that hopefully will get us in that direction. I'm uh, really looking forward to working with um, a just special side of thank you to, to Council President for partnering um, with council members to get some of these things done that can benefit our entire city. It's not necessarily a specific ward, but we really are trying to change lives here in the city of Cleveland, regardless if you live in Ward 7 or if you live on the west side, southeast side, we all are truly Clevelanders and we actually have to provide a better way for all of Clevelanders. I appreciate and look forward to working with Mayor Bibb and his administration to get these things um, um, uh, to life and I'm really looking forward to guarding the support of council members. So thank you so much, Council President. Thank you so much, Council Lady. <laughs> Councilman Joe Jones. Mr. Chairman, I rise. I just want to take the time also to thank um, um, Dr. Gord Dr. Gordon for um, uh, releasing those funds and allowing it to go back uh, into a scholarship format. And um, this council, certainly this councilman is very appreciative of that, that he took the time to listen and sometimes we make decisions, and after we made those decisions, it's very difficult for decision makers to go back and say, hey, well, wait a minute. So he listened to the call and the cry of this council and the public, and I look forward to working with him and his administration so that we can improve the conditions, and this administration, so that we can improve the conditions of education in the city of Cleveland. Uh, if we don't get serious about our educational system that we have, we're going to lose and continue to lose our city because we're not producing the people, the men and the women. The future of this city comes from our educational campuses. So, Mr. Chairman, I just, again, I'm very brief here. Um, I appreciate what he's done, and I look forward to working with the administration and the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, please call and excuse the absences. Motion by Councilmember Gray that the absence of Councilmember Spencer is hereby excused, uh, seconded by Councilmember Bishop. Council is adjourned to the next regular meeting on April 1, 2024.